Hi everyone and welcome back to our course on Google Calendar. In this lesson, we're going to look at appointment schedules. Google Calendar's bookable appointment schedule is an efficient way to allow others to book appointments or schedule time with you. The great thing about this feature is it syncs with your existing calendar in real time automatically, meaning that lunch break you added or that out of office or that focus time you added, maybe a meeting that you said yes to, all of those times are automatically removed from the booking page so that others see your real time availability. In addition, once they book a meeting or appointment with you, an event is automatically added to both your calendar and their calendar. There are two ways to begin. If you select create and then select appointment schedule, it will take you to a full screen appointment schedule calendar. On the other hand, you can drag and drop and select a time frame on your calendar, just as you do in creating an event. Then select appointment schedule. If you happen to already have an existing schedule, you will be prompted here to either select this availability to add to an existing schedule or to create a new appointment schedule. Click continue to access the full screen appointment schedule window that we saw before. So first thing we're gonna do is give it a title. This could be as simple as office hours or maybe it is your name. Next, set your duration. One good rule of thumb here is to go on the lower end of time for the duration. And if someone needs a larger amount of time with you, they can simply double book. For general availability, you can set the schedules to repeat weekly or set as does not repeat. Also, under general availability, select the days and the times that you are available. Remember that this syncs and reads your calendar, meaning you can put 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. as long as you have that lunch break on your calendar. You have other events marked as busy. You responded yes or no to other events you're invited to. You've got your out of office and focus time on your calendar. As long as those times are on there and marked as busy, those times will be protected and not show up on the appointment schedule. The other option here is to do specific days and times, such as Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, or maybe Tuesday, Thursday afternoons. They don't have to be all day events, so customize it to fit your line of work. Next is the scheduling window. It can begin right now, or start and end on a specific date. You can select the maximum time in advance that your appointment schedule can be booked. The default is 60 days. Also select the minimum time before the appointment starts that it can be booked. It really depends on your line of work and personal preference, so use this setting strategically. Next, you have adjusted availability followed by additional settings such as your buffer time, which is the time between appointment slots. You may also decide to set a maximum number of bookings per day. Again, this will depend on your line of work. For those with business and education accounts, you can also select for your appointment schedule to look at additional calendars other than your main calendar, as well as add people to co-host the appointment with you. When you have all of these initial settings set, make sure to click next. Your booking page will show your photo from your Google account along with your name. Your next option is location and conferencing, which you can select to automatically be video conferencing with Google Meet, to be in person, to be a phone call, or you can select none and specify later. We're going to look at a trick with this, so I'm gonna select none. Remember to utilize the description to add notes for the people visiting your booking page. Add that note about signing up for double bookings if they need additional time. Maybe specify the things that you can or cannot help with, or maybe refer them to places where they can get certain resources or information. Next is the booking form, which is very important. So by default, it will collect the guest's first name, last name, and their email address. Click on add an item. The choices are phone number or custom item. With these, you can require a response or leave it optional. If you select none for the location earlier, one great custom item here is location. Ask them, do you want to meet in person or virtually? 
Maybe mark this as required and then select add item. Repeat for additional custom items such as maybe the reason for the meeting. Depending on your line of work, there may be additional information you would like to collect before you meet with this person. Last option is booking confirmations and reminders. With a regular Google account, you and the person who made the appointment will get an email confirmation along with the calendar invitation. For those with a business or education account, you can select additional email reminders for the person who made the appointment. When you're done, click save. Appointment schedules appear behind the rest of your regular events and indicated with the square block icon. You can click on that to see it and to edit it at any time, as well as to access or share your booking page. From the booking page, guests will see your availability, they'll select a time, fill out the information that you require, and then click book. Again, this event is automatically placed on their calendar and on your calendar. Unless you turned off email notifications, you'll receive an email that this time was booked in addition to seeing it appear on your calendar. Your attendance will automatically be marked as yes. So if for some reason you are not available, make sure to open that special booking event and select cancel appointment in the bottom right corner. Awesome. As we've talked about many times, the goal here is to increase productivity and improve communication so that we are all working more efficiently. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.